first trimester. Um, I don't know how any the experience has been for anyone else out there, but for me, I like I found out I was pregnant. I called my doctor pretty much right away, like the day after, and he was like, "Okay, cool. See you in like two months." And I was just kind of left there with so many questions. And of course, when I called, you know, the nurse was like, "Do you have any questions?" And at the time, I literally had just found out, so. I was like, I have all the questions, but I don't know what they are right now. Um, and I didn't want to call back every day with like some new questions. So I did what any person in 2018 would do. And I just searched the internet for the answers. Um, there are a lot of good resources out there on the internet to find answers for during pregnancy, but there are some bad ones. And honestly, there's just like a lot out there. And sometimes it's hard to wrap your mind around what to believe, what's right, what's wrong. Maybe if you're feeling completely different than what the internet says you should feel, um, you just don't know. So I wanted to just take a minute and really dive deep into nutrition during the first trimester. Hopefully answer some questions that'll tide you over to your first appointment. Cause I mean, let's face it, for most people that you don't go until you're what, 10 weeks and your first trimester is almost over by that point. So if you were doing something wrong, you were doing it wrong the whole time. But I'm sure that you all are doing everything right. Um, so if you are new to my channel, welcome and thank you for watching. Uh, my name's Emily, I am a registered dietitian and I'm also 19 weeks pregnant. <laughs> I had to think about that. Um, so yeah, I'm through my first trimester. Um, thank goodness, cause it gets a little, it definitely gets better after the first, uh, first trimester, but uh, but yeah, even though I learned all this, the stuff about nutrition and pregnancy while I was in school, um, I still wanted, like, I still went back and refreshed on all of it as soon as I found out I was pregnant because I wanted to make sure that I remembered every little bit of information. Um, and now I'm going to share that with you. The first thing I want to talk about is the first thing you should do right when you get pregnant. Actually, it's something you should do when you start trying to get pregnant and that's make sure that you're taking a multivitamin and make sure you're taking folic acid. Any prenatal vitamin is going to have folic acid in it. You wanna make sure that it's at least 800 milligrams, micrograms? Well, the number's 800, I'll, I'll put it here. Um, 800 whatever grams of folate, you wanna make sure you're getting that in per day. Um, all the vitamins and minerals are important during pregnancy, but during the first trimester, folate is extremely important because it helps prevent neural tube defects like spina bifida, and it's just such an easy way to prevent that birth defect is just making sure that you're taking enough folate. So step one, if you are pregnant and you are watching this video right now, not taking any kind of multivitamin, not taking any folate, like get off the video, go to the store, get yourself a multivitamin, Make sure it's got enough folate and then come back and watch the rest. Um, some issues people have with uh, vitamins is that they can cause stomach upset. A lot of times that's due to the iron in them. So you may want to look for one if that's something that um, is happening to you or you think might happen to you. You might want to look for one that's like they say is like easy on the stomach. But of course, if it doesn't have iron, you just want to make sure that you're eating enough. Um, green leafy vegetables and enough meat to supplement the iron. And I know for me personally, it wasn't necessarily the vitamin itself that was making me sick in my first trimester, but just like the act of swallowing pills, uh, made me gag every time. I don't know what it was. Um, so right, I did start using some gummy vitamins. Um, right now, I'm just using like Kroger brand prenatal vitamins. They have all of the same um, amounts of vitamins and minerals as the like on-brand one but I will say they do not taste very good the first ones I got the on-brand ones they tasted so good I could have eaten more than the recommended amount but these ones they don't really taste very good your gummy vitamins aren't gonna have um, as much calcium or iron especially if they're supposed to be easy on your stomach um, but you can get that through food sources um, making sure that you're you know eating dairy for your calcium 
Um, and like I said, like meats and green leafy vegetables for iron, I actually started supplementing iron in the second trimester when uh, my nausea was down to where I could start taking pills again. Um, so yeah, first, foremost, so important, make sure you are taking a prenatal. I know that there are people out there that get through their whole pregnancy without taking any vitamins because they were able to eat a healthy, balanced diet, which is great. But, excuse me, I shouldn't be drinking a seltzer water while trying to do a video. It's making me really burpy. <laughs> okay. What did I just say? But for a lot of people out there, especially when you're getting like these food intolerances and kind of getting nauseous, it's really hard to keep like a healthy, balanced diet. And even if you are eating pretty healthy, it doesn't hurt. I mean, yes, it costs money but they're not that expensive. I think mine were like $8 a bottle and it lasts 45, so a month and a half, basically. So that's what, like, I don't know, less than $5 a month or something, a math, okay. But still, it's, it's not that expensive. It's not very hard. And yeah, you might forget a day here and there, but if you're consistently taking them most days, you're preventing so many like possible, um, birth like defects and risks and it's just it's so important so the next thing I want to talk about is like what foods you're supposed to avoid because that was one I definitely had to refresh on so the first one I'll talk about is fish now it is actually recommended to be consuming um, fit like at least one serving of fish every week during pregnancy the fatty acids found in fish are really beneficial for the baby's brain development my prenatals actually also have, what is it, DHA and EPA, I think. But you do want to avoid fish high in mercury. And I have a list here of the fish high in mercury are swordfish, shark, mackerel, walleye, albacore tuna, bass, and tilefish. Um, so those are fish that you want to completely avoid during pregnancy um, and fish that are low in mercury and don't really need to be limited during pregnancy are canned light tuna, salmon, cod, tilapia, pollock, and haddock. Um, that being said, every time I'm at the grocery store and I'm looking at fish, like, I Google it. I never remember which fish are high and which fish are low. Um, so I Google the fish every time. I'm like, is this high in mercury? And luckily our phones can tell us just about everything. Now, lunch meats. I kind of had forgotten that you can't have lunch meats during pregnancy and the reason is it is the risk of listeria the thing which is a foodborne illness and the thing about listeria is that it can grow under refrigerated temperatures which is why lunch meats and unpasteurized like dairy products are um, dangerous but you can you don't have to completely now the unpasteurized stuff yeah avoid that during pregnancy but the lunch meats, you can have them as long as they're heated. Um, even if that just means like taking the meat off your sandwich and it in the microwave for a bit. I mean, I still go to Subway all the time. I just get it toasted or like the meat microwaved. Um, so it's not a big deal. Um, it's still a pretty uncommon thing to happen during pregnancy. But one of those things you just want to try and avoid if possible. Not going to lie, I've forgotten a, like a couple times and had... Uh, deli meat just like ordered a turkey sandwich from Panera and not thinking about it ate it and then I was like oh yeah I probably shouldn't have done that or I should ask for it heated but I survived the thing that has honestly probably been the hardest for me is like undercooked and raw meat and eggs um raw like meaning sushi <laughs> I don't just eat like raw meat all the time but if I'm gonna eat a steak, it's gonna be like medium rare at the most. So I've basically just not been eating steak during my pregnancy because I can't, I can't do that to a piece of meat. And that's another one because of the foodborne illness. Um, and that's mostly more like salmonella and some different ones. But you want to avoid any uh, undercooked meats, eggs. I love a sunny side up egg. Um, and sushi. Well, technically raw fish. Like you can have vegetable sushi or crab meat sushi so as long as it's cooked. The other thing, not to avoid, but to limit, is your caffeine intake. This has been kind of like a hot button topic with me because I feel like everyone that knows I'm pregnant, if they see me drinking anything caffeinated, they're like, oh, shouldn't you like not be doing that? 
and no, you can have some caffeine. You can actually have like a moderate amount, uh, up to 200 milligrams, which is about two cups of coffee, kind of depending on the size of the cup and all that stuff. Um, you can even like, a Red Bull has like 114 milligrams of caffeine, and I know this because I have drank them just a couple times. Oh my gosh, the fatigue is real though. Sometimes you need it. Um, the best way to kind of monitor your caffeine is check like the bottle of what you're drinking or if it's something like coffee out of a coffee pot just kind of google uh, maybe that brand how much caffeine is in there in the first trimester having excessive caffeine does increase your risk of miscarriage so it's just something to watch but you can have some you're gonna maybe probably need it to get through the day so um, if you want to cut it out completely if you're able to do that go you like there's no harm in completely cutting it out but some people can't do that. <laughs> now, kind of going past food, some lifestyle changes that do need to occur during pregnancy is one, alcohol needs to go completely. I have, that was one thing that I had kind of heard a few like things on the internet about people that say it's okay to have like a glass of wine a day with pregnancy and um, you know, as long as it's in moderation, it's okay. When I became pregnant, I just went ahead and looked back at my books, looked back at the research, and there is no research proving that alcohol is safe during pregnancy. There's a lot of research proving that it's not safe, but there is no amount that has been shown to be safe. Um, think about it this way. Your little tiny baby is like brand new with these brand new organs and just like now got a liver which is you know what kind of filters the blood and it's not functioning you know 100 percent. it's not functioning like your liver is if you drink alcohol that crosses the placenta that gets in the baby's bloodstream and their liver can't filter it out like yours does so it stays in their system for twice as long as it would yours even just a small amount and i and i know the stories i know the stories of people that have done it and it's been okay but it's just not worth the risk. Um, there are non-alcoholic wines and beers on the market. Or, you know, just have like a like a soda or something different. If your friends are having alcohol, maybe you can splurge and have your soda at that point or um, something to kind of just drink on. And uh, the next one is smoking. So this is one you definitely want to talk to your doctor about when you call and make that appointment. Um, let them know if you are currently smoking because if you are like smoking a substantial amount it is actually best to like wean it down rather than just stop cold turkey um, it just puts your it puts your body into too much shock to like if you're smoking a couple packs a day to go from that to none definitely talk to your doctor um, if you are currently smoking your goal though should be to wean down to none Okay, so that was all the fun stuff that you can't do while you're pregnant. <laughs> um, but you get a baby out of it, so I think it's kind of worth it. Now I want to talk a little bit about weight gain um, and like, you know, nutrition, like calorie needs and stuff during your first trimester. So the recommended weight gain during your first trimester is kind of like zero to five pounds. But that's not only is that like a range, but it's a pretty loose range. Um, there are plenty of people, you know, who don't gain any weight or actually lose a little bit of weight because, you know, they have severe morning sickness that have a healthy baby. There's plenty of people that gain like up to 10 pounds in the first trimester, they have a healthy baby. The, what's more important to your baby's health is the total weight gain over pregnancy more than it is, um, you know, the weight gain each week. So the weight gain you can kind of expect for your whole pregnancy is if you start your pregnancy at a normal BMI or like a normal weight, healthy weight gain would be considered anywhere from 25 to 35 pounds. Um, now if you're underweight, it's 28 to 40 pounds. If you're overweight, it is 15 to 25 pounds. And if you're considered obese, it is 11 to 20 pounds. I hope that wasn't too confusing. <laughs> um, and if you don't know what your BMI is, there's plenty of online calculators. You can just go kind of like Google one and match that to see about how much weight you should gain during your pregnancy. But the recommended weight gain for everyone is actually zero to five pounds the first trimester, whether you start off 
underweight or overweight. Um, the one thing you do want to watch though, because like I said, some people can lose weight, but if you start off underweight and you start to lose weight, you definitely want to call your doctor right away, especially if you're experiencing really bad morning sickness, then you'll want to talk to your doctor about some intervention. All of that being said, what's more important than like focusing on the scale during that first trimester is just focusing on what you're eating. So your calorie needs during the first trimester actually don't change from normal. Um, if you were just following a normal diet before, continue that normal diet. Now, if you were, you know, trying to lose weight before and eating a little bit less, you'll want to bump your calories up to just like a normal amount. And sometimes just getting that regular amount of calories can seem like a lot if you're not feeling too good because of some of these symptoms that come along with that first trimester. So when it comes to symptoms, you know, like the morning sickness, um, some things you can do to help is first off, make sure that multivitamin that you're taking is not causing any nausea. Um, if you notice you're nauseous after you take it every time, you might wanna switch to a different kind. If you are vomiting a lot, definitely make sure that you're hydrated, make sure you're taking in enough fluids. And I know that can be hard uh, if you're not feeling good. Um, but just whatever it may be, if it's water, if it's like Sprite or ginger ale, um, I know, you know, soda might not seem like a healthy thing, but when you need fluid, you just need it in whatever way you can get it. And the same thing with foods. So if you're someone that, you know, used to eat really, really healthy, but now all of a sudden like vegetables make you want to like, well, they make you want to vomit and you feel like you can't eat them at all. That's okay. Your first trimester is only like a few, you know, a couple of months really once you find out you're pregnant then it's only like two more months it's okay to kind of like let yourself eat a little bit unhealthy if that's what you are able to eat uh, on your good days try and eat well on your bad days just eat what you can it's really more important that like you're feeding yourself than it is to be like strictly healthy the whole time so i hope that that was a helpful video I know that there are some specific things that I didn't talk about, um, so just like leave any more questions in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Um, and if you are in your first trimester right now, just remember like that is a finite amount of time. Um, for me, my symptoms started to go down, I would say around like week 11 and my like kind of first trimester symptoms were pretty much gone by week 14. So there is this an end in sight just kind of keep that in mind keep plugging away like it's i don't know i haven't been in my third trimester yet but between the first and second the first is way way harder i promise it gets better at least for a little bit i don't know i'll have to like update you once i hit that third trimester that might that one might be kind of hard <laughs> um.